Welcome back to another episode of the one-on-one -on -one podcast. If you are watching, you are probably seeing that we are not in our home base in Laguna Niguel, California. We are actually on location in Miami, Florida at one of our leadership events called Basecamp. For those that are not familiar, we do an annual event every year uh, where all of our leaders come together to network, have fun, basically celebrate the brand. And as always, I am joined by my partner in crime, Kathy Baker. I'm so excited. I think we like need to hold hands because not only are we in the same place, but we're like close enough we can it's touch true. each other, it's which true. is so exciting. Um, we do have Ryan here. Unfortunately, because we had to travel, uh, we could not bring his mic. So Ryan is here, but he can't speak. <laughs> We are also, once again, joined by Taylor Christensen. Taylor, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm excited. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> also, our guest today is one of our partners, Bill Risser, EVP of Strategic Partnerships at Rate My Agent. Yes. Bill, yep. how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, so, well, before we started recording, we were talking to you, and you are miles ahead of this podcast. Uh, <laughs> like, how many episodes are you on? So, with your own. So I have original episodes. There's 366. Okay. These are that are actual podcast episodes. There's probably another 50 of me messing around, trying mm -hmm. things out. Um, I did a 20 episode series with Joe Rand, who's a very smart guy in the business. Oh. And uh, it's very funny. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, I, I, I started podcasting in 2015. I wanted to make sure I knew how to podcast prior to talking to agents about podcasting. I mean, like, you were ahead of the curve, though. Yeah, there was um, there was one other agent up in in Tacoma. Um, um, I'm going to skip her name because I can't remember it. But <laughs> but it was moved to Tacoma. Was the name of her blog and her podcast. Uh, and so you know, I heard hers. I I love interviewing people. Uh, so that made it really simple. I'm curious yeah. by nature, and I'm sure you are too. Because yep. if you're doing this and you've, you're already close to fifty, that's huge. Because mm -hmm. most people kind of. Pan out around seven or eight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe fewer. Yeah, so. congratulations. Thank you. It's a. Uh, I, I think we're still in the learning curve, but we're we're getting the hang of it. We love doing stuff like this. We we were able to do this last year at our base camp event in Austin, um, and it's fun because once again, like Kathy and I, I'm based in Southern California, Kathy's in North Carolina, so we record virtually, and so this is always great for us to be together. And yeah, like so, we, we are so excited to do this with you, and I. I can I ask a few questions about yeah. the podcast before we get into sure. Rate My Agent? Sure, yeah. Why, okay, 2015, why did you decide to start doing it? I, I realize you're curious and you said you like interviewing yeah. people, but what was the, like... Well, this is this is the story I don't tell a lot of people, but I, I, at the time, I was kind of a big Howard Stern fan. Mm -hmm. I um, loved interview. his interviews, right, interview where ever. you could do an interview for an hour and 40 minutes yeah. and not have a commercial break. Yep. was amazing. His Paul McCartney interview is unbelievable. Yeah. So I thought, I'd love to do that someday. It'd be fun. And so I was able to combine that with the, what we're doing here, sure. you know, and I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just interview these people. I had, I had a lot of connections from the Inman world. Uh, so in fact, like the first 50 guests, I would say 47 of them I met at an Inman event. Okay. Right? So uh, it was really simple to kind of keep going. I thought I would do 10 episodes, pack it away, be all good and ready to go. Mm -hmm. But uh, it just was fun. It kept going. I stopped using the earbuds from Apple <laughs> with the mic for my mic, <laughs> and then, I, and then I, I moved on to a, yeah. a much lower mic, and now I'm using, you know, Shure's, and I have a setup at home. Totally. It's, it's been fantastic. So that, that was the impetus was hearing really good interviewers and trying to do the same. Yeah. I, I mean, that's... I, so I've been with Realty One Group for uh, a little over six years now, and we... I mean, you remember, Taylor, way back in the day, we tried to launch a version of this podcast, and it didn't go through. And it was something that uh, when when I finally met Kathy, we we wanted to push for this so badly, and we finally got it going. And now we have the momentum, and it's it's honestly turned into one of the best pieces of content that mm -hmm. our our company has. Yeah, there's so much you can do with the podcast. I mean, it, yeah, especially you're doing video. I've never done video. Mm -hmm. I'm an old school audio only guy. Totally. I mean, I put it on YouTube, but it's a it's a <laughs> it's a sound wave that's moving. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But some people just love to listen to it on yeah. YouTube, so you got to put it where they're at, right? Yeah, and I think you know the, this this post pandemic world, uh, like it's an avenue that everybody. I mean, I would say everyone has a, a podcast that they probably listen to on a weekly basis, right. whatever it is. Yeah, Absolutely. everyone has a podcast app and um, we drop it every week. So like I get really excited during my <laughs> lunch break. I get the new one-on-one -on -one episode and I'm like, oh, oh, it's exciting to hear. Do I have time to listen to it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Taylor, why don't you start us off before we go down a rabbit hole? Start us off with uh, let's let's talk rate my agent before we get into the fun sports, you know, podcasting stuff. So yeah, uh, rate my agent is a company that we've been partnered with since 2019. Before I joined the company. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really excited about this company. And I was really excited and really pushing for uh, the partnership because it's something that really set our brand apart to be able to offer a platform for real estate agents to collect reviews. Mm -hmm. It's something that from NAR stats and what you hear from top producers that when you get to a certain level in your business, your past clients are really what's fueling your pipeline. You're always still doing lead gen and marketing, right? But um, if you do really well with your current clients who become your past clients, then they refer you to their friends. And that's how your business takes it to the next level. And the fact that we didn't offer that and a lot of other franchises don't offer that as a core product, like how we offer a CRM, I'm like, we need to do that. We need to be the first ones to do that. Right. And I don't go anywhere from a restaurant to a doctor's office to, I don't use any service or buy any product that I don't read the review. And I think with the average realtor being in their 50s and the average buyer being probably in their 30s, the 50-year-old realtor or the 55-year-old realtor is not used to accumulating and and collecting reviews, and the buyers are. Even if you're doing a referral business, you still need, because you may be working with that next generation, Mm -hmm. you need a review. And that's what I love about this is the ease, the elegance, the simplicity of having a review because you have to have it. I mean, it's now... You know, the, the sign, the website, you got to have the reviews. Right. It, it validates you. We were ordering pizza for the team last night, and we were like, oh, this place doesn't have reviews. Yeah, I literally we're heard it. They are like, oh, order a two-star from- review. We're not ordering from there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just so important. Um, what would you say? Can I ask a question? Yeah, Kathy, this okay, is your podcast. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> like best practices, for, mm. because I think there's hesitancy and there's – there are not good practices in place with realtors yeah. to, to obtain. Yeah. Um, so talk about best practices in getting the right review. Number one best practice is get over your fear of asking and ask. Okay. And then number two is ask. And number three is ask. I'm serious. It's, agents are so afraid. They think they're putting someone off or it's, it's I don't want to trouble them. Um, so we found that, that the people that are really good at using Rate My Agent, what they do is they will set the expectation early, right? So if it's a buyer, it's going to be during that consultation where you're going over what are they looking for. If it's a seller during the listing consultation, you know, and you're having that whole conversation, somewhere you need to say, by the way, you know, I'm, you met me through this process, and it's really important to, uh, to, to my business. And so if you don't mind, at the end of this, I'm going to ask you for a review. Is that okay? If they say yes... Mm-hmm. You know, there's something in the psyche of people that says, well, I said yes when it when that review request shows up from yeah, us. And it's real there's, simple. There's guilt. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, call, we'll call it guilt. Yeah. yeah. I've, and, I've and, committed uh, to do it. Yeah. So now I need to do it. And we make it easy, right? We don't ask them to log into something like other review places do. All they've got to do is is click a link. It takes them directly to a place. Click the stars. Write the, the review uh, and tell us if they're the buyer or seller and hit submit. So we make it really easy. So we need people to get over. And it's, it's something on our onboardings we talk about all the time. You know, a timing of it is um, unique for us because we want to make sure the deal's closed first before we get the review. So for us, right at the closing table, depending on your state and how you close, right? I was in Arizona in the title space for a long time and we would, you know, sign at the table, but it wouldn't really record until the next day, Mm -hmm. right? So it's got to be closed in the MLS system, right? For us to then, uh, or or in Skyslope, in order for us to send that review request out. So we're looking at um, just making sure right away you let them know, hey, it's going to be coming. And then we take care of the rest, right? We're going to prompt them five more times over the next three weeks because maybe they got busy. Maybe they don't have time. But the agent doesn't have to worry about it. They can see on the dashboard that we're politely asking them. So it's got to be set the expectation and ask. Right. How important is that scripting? How important is it for for them to say, you know, I would like – I would like to be the best realtor in Raleigh, North Carolina, or I would like to provide the best service in the triangle. So you're, How important yeah. is it or, or not? No, you're, you're right on with that, right? So you're, you're talking about um, is it possible to prompt your consumer on certain keywords to use right. in the review? That is absolutely important. Absolutely. So if you're, if you're striving to be a certain thing, first of all, they, you want them using your entire name, not just Kathy. 
your whole name, right? Because I think that's more important. That's going to matter in the world of Google and search and SEO and all that stuff. Uh, and if you're going for a certain neighborhood, say you're Cary and as opposed to, you know, uh, Durham, make sure you're saying that. So you're, you're, you do kind of set them up a little bit and, and we have a place where you can put some notes in, okay. in the request that says, so hey, would, if you don't mind. You would prompt them for what would be searched. Correct. So Absolutely. best carry realtor. Absolutely. Okay. If that's what you're going for and that's what you're working on and that's all your other content that you're putting out there, let it all work together, you know, and, and really in the most powerful place, which is, you know, it's all Google. I think because people are so easily scripted, you know, they yeah. don't know what to put in the review. So if you tell them, yeah. if you could, if you could say these things, yeah. I think they do it. They do it, they'll do it in a heartbeat. It yeah. The consumer. Yeah. It makes it easy for them. There, there's a great, um, I, I heard a great tip from another agent who said they send a little three question survey. It's not much, but it's like, what, what do we do really well? What did we do not mm -hmm. so well? And what would you change or something like that? And, and like the second question this person asks turns out to be the review like 90% of the time. Wow. So then they send that back to him and go, this is really good. If you don't mind using this in the review request, I'm going to send you, this would be amazing. So your looks like it's a little survey, but instead it turns into this, you know, a, a review capture you know, tool. I think it's pretty, pretty awesome. And, and people want to refer you. I, I think the hesitancy, I um, to, ask is a mindset with agents that they need to just get over. Well, assuming the agent did a good job, right? Well, uh, so they, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's that thing, right? Yeah. You know, there's the whole, what do you do with negative reviews? We can, we can chat about that yeah. later, but yeah, there's, uh, yeah, I think to be honest, most agents know when they killed it, when they yeah. did a great job. Yes. Right. And, and I, I I'll, I'm not, not contradicting you, Taylor, but I don't think you have past clients anymore. They're all clients, yeah. right? Yeah. So you just never, they're all your clients, no matter mm -hmm. how long ago they were. And it might be eight years before they need you again, but you need to stay connected to them. And that's why in our tool, we make sure that we make it easy for you to spread those reviews out socially, because that's where your clients are. They're right. hanging out, reading your social posts and those kinds of things. Right. Um, and to be able to, for them to be able to see, wow, another happy sale. Taylor's really doing well. That's awesome. Well, and it's also, we talk about this all the time, the degrees of separation, right? One of your clients, not past clients, one of your clients has a next door neighbor or a brother or sister or whatever that's going to be moving and the rest is history. Yep. That's, so, that's and the it. reality is statistically, it's like 86% of buyers and sellers would use their realtor again. Not only would they use their realtor, but they would tell friends, family, mm. coworkers, yet only about 14%. And in my, in my career i've seen it go from 30 percent to now it's in the low teens of an of a seasoned realtors business is past business and it's because the the time in a home has gone from three to four years to six to eight years and they're not staying in touch that period of time and you're right it's how do you where are your where are your clients and your customers that they know where you are mm -hmm. the only reason they're not using you is because they can't find you they don't remember your name. And sometimes. they can't, right. Yeah, I mean, it's been yeah. eight years, right. right? And if you haven't right. connected with them, yeah, that loyalty gap is, I like calling it, and that's, that's brutal, yeah. Yeah, right? To have that to have that much love built up, that much social currency built up and just wasted away by not staying connected. Well, and to, to, not to, I know we're trying to keep this as evergreen as possible, but uh, like think about the shifting market that we're in right now. Sure. You, you know, yeah. People should be putting their ducks in a row for when it shifts back, and you know there's going to be more homes on the market to sell, and they, you know. Pe and the the other thing is the churn of realtors. I think for to talk about specifically this market, and we see the number of people that are getting out of business, mm -hmm. or, you know, I love that adopt a client. Like if you know that the co broker has been a shitty broker, for lack of a better term, and that that consumer is not going to use that realtor again, right. go ahead and adopt them. I'm not saying do anything that casts a shadow on anything unethical, but pick them up, stay in touch with them, because when they buy and sell again, they may not use the broker right. they used, but you could, I think, I think agents miss that part of the business over and over and over. Yeah. Because it, I think there's this nervousness about code of ethics and, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that's not mine. And, but, but, you know, look, we, I was in title space for 20 years. We did it all the time. Yeah. You know, if we, when someone directed a deal to us and the other, we loved the other agent, we went after them yeah. hard. <laughs> they were going to be our, they were gonna be our customer. Yeah. And, and it's about providing good service. Yeah. And if they didn't get service, good service the first round, why not yeah. make their experience better? Like it. It's a, it's interesting that I want to bring up what you said in the very, very beginning of we, we live in a society that is literally run by reviews. Yeah. Think about 
Amazon, the one of the catchphrases is five star review. Think about Rotten Tomatoes when you are thinking about going to see a movie. Is it above a sixty percent? And so I guess it's like, how do we? I'm, I'm going to talk from a marketing standpoint. How do we get our entire network to adopt that mentality? Like they, they already live it. So why are they not doing yeah. it with their careers? You know? Yeah, I think I, th I think part of it is. It, look, when I talk to a room full of people uh, and I ask them, everyone here does reviews. I don't. I, now the question is, who's not using reviews? And mm -hmm. of course, it's nobody, right? Um, but and and everybody kind of has the same style. Because when I say it, I think you'll all agree. You all look at the one stars first. You mm -hmm. check them out, see how it's going, mm -hmm. and then what do you do? I'm sorry, five stars first. Yeah, yeah. My apologies. And then you go right to the one stars. Mm -hmm. Why are they upset? Right? Why are they not yeah. doing it right? And then, you know, you can find the wacky reviewer who's not even talking about the product or right. whatever it is. The person, and that, <laughs> the person that writes on Yelp after every restaurant. Whatever, yeah. yeah. And, and then you go, then you come back and you find someone, you know, really reasoned thought about why this transaction didn't go the right way, which is a huge opportunity for that agent mm -hmm. to then really make an impression down the road, right? So even the, those that are afraid of reviews because of the negative side of it, and that's the, a big thing for a lot of people. I'm afraid I'll get a bad review. Those bad reviews can turn into really positive statements about how you handle problems, how you handle adversity. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I'm close to the business, so I would look at that agent and say, wow, this person's going to be fine during the transaction because look how they handled this review. They took, they took ownership. They fixed it. They, they said the right things. They didn't throw gas on the fire. Um, and I know they're going to be a great agent. I think people are smart enough to understand that. They're going to go, wow, this agent really knows how to handle this. It almost seems dishonest if there's not, if everything's five star, like right. what are oh, you totally. hiding? I do. <laughs> it, 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 it's suspect. <laughs> I do say that 4.8 is a new 5.0. Yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, right. you don't want to be a 5.0 yeah. with 400 reviews. That it's, feels impossible. It, yeah. feel, it yeah. feels like it, it wasn't created by a human. <laughs> exactly. That's like, yeah. And I, and I think it's, it, I want to go back to what you said about setting the expectation, because a lot of people, when they go into a real estate transaction, they think it's an event. Mm -hmm. And what I've always encouraged realtors to say is, do you think this is an event or a process? And people say it's an event. And I say, no, it's a process. And like with any process, there's ease and elegance and there's blood and guts. Mm -hmm. So it's going to get bloody sometimes, like maybe the inspection, right? But my job is to get you through that. And if you set that, then when you get to the review time and they say, well, you know what? The inspection was really bad. Say, mm -hmm, that was part of the process. How do we do on the other side of it? Yeah. So you've coached them initially. Okay, it's, this is not going to be smooth sailing all the time, but we're going to get to the success. We're going to get to the destination. Mm -hmm. So I think that expectation conversation is so important to prepare them not only for the for the process of the transaction, but for the review, Yeah. to set up the review. Yeah. There was an agent that I, I interviewed in Tampa who went through a, almost a promise, right? So it's mm -hmm. like the secret or the promise, uh, something along those lines where he said, uh, look, if I can do all these things we've just laid out, if I can make this process go this, this direction, I'm going to ask a favor. I'm going to send you um, seven links for seven reviews. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> Seven? And, and I role played with him. And he said, he explained, well, like, you know, if we can get there, you know, that's what I'm going to ask you for. And I, you know, would you promise me that you'll at least, you know, look at that email and maybe do a couple of them. His average was three. He got three reviews on three different sites. So, you know, the reviews would go on three different sites for him, which is massive. He's now pushing 2000 reviews in his, in his universe of review platforms. So, <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that takes a lot of effort. I'm not saying that's the way to go, but you, if you're that sort of, you have that sort of if personality. You're that committed. Yep. If you're that. But it's also like I think you said it earlier, Kathy. Like that is the definition of legitimacy in this yep. world that we live in. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's just driving whether we more like it or more, not. Yeah, it, you know, driving more and more yep. business. Because because I'll tell you what, you know, Google loves finding reviews. Yeah for products and people and services. They love that. And that's why I write my agent so powerful because if you search, first of all, in the old days, uh, Kathy and I were gonna, can we go in the old days? We can go right. in the old days, <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. But um, <laughs> I, I think, uh, you know, there was, you know, you, know, you were never, like what was, when it came to reviews, there was no way you were going to even think about looking mm -hmm. for those, right? Um, yeah, so it just wasn't even a part of it. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, today, nowadays, um, when, when I say to somebody, look, someone's going to Google your name. You go, what? No, why would they Google my name? I go, because somebody told them you were a good realtor. And they're not going to just believe their mom, even their mom. They're going to Google that name. Do you all Google the name? Absolutely. And, and you, what do you want to pop up first? 
you can control this a little bit. You, you know, Google loves finding third-party validation, other people talking great about you. So you build up those reviews into a review platform where you've got this, this 30, 40, 50, 100 reviews, you're guaranteed for that to be a page one result. Mm -hmm. And people go right to it. Reviews, think, and they start reading all this great stuff about you. And to that point, a little PSA, if you will set a Google alert for your name, when things you, you'll get ahead of anything that may be posted that you need to go and address. And we can talk about that. And unless your name is Kathy Baker, I know every movie so that's, that she's going to be I was in, just about to, <laughs> not, I don't want to get too into the weeds of SEO and, yeah, and, and digital marketing. No, no, no. It's, I mean, you're, I would love to, but, um, so let's say Josh Katz, pretty popular Jewish name. Let's, how do you then specify it? In your, in, cause like if you were to, there's probably a hundred thousand Josh Katz's. Yeah. So, yeah. So all the platforms are going to have your name, right? Mm -hmm. You know, our platform, you're going to have a, a full profile built out for you. That's going to have all your name. It's going to have, you're going to fill out your, your bio. You're going to put all your stuff in there. So that's the first piece of the puzzle is having a place for those reviews to go. That's already really dialed into sure. you. Second, remember every single one of those reviews, we talked about it earlier. You want them saying Josh Katz mm -hmm. over and over and over. You want them talking about what you're trying to be found yeah. for. And so that's how how that's it for Google, right? Because when they're looking at Josh Katz Realtor or Josh Katz Reviews, mm -hmm. uh, that's usually what people will type in when they're looking for reviews. Right. It's going to be really easy for Google, who always wants to serve up the exact right thing, right? Because right. the, the more they serve up the exact right thing, the more the more they know about us, the more they can sell us mm -hmm. stuff, the more whatever, our data is gone, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think it's, it's critical to make sure you're tying your name to everything, yeah. including the, the actual profile. So would you, uh, I, I think the word relentless, right? Uh, you, you have to be relentless. Yeah, I, I, you do. I think it's uh, got to become, it's, it's just part of the checklist. And, you know, you have a lot of things on checklists. And Kathy, you know this because you're the one that has to make sure they're all following those mm -hmm. checklists, right? And if you don't do this, 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 and this, you don't get paid. Mm -hmm. That's the right. first thing, right? Well, if it's almost like if you don't do this, this, and this, and this, you're, you're, you're going to get paid by Kathy, but you're not going to get paid by anybody else right. on the road. You've right. got to put, you've got to make reviews a big part of that process, not just uh, an afterthought. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't say, what do you do with a bad review? Here's the deal. Qu quickly call them. First of all, respond to them immediately outside of the review place. Start to figure that's out. A, that's a really good okay, point. First, good point. Like that, first that thing. That actually is yeah. a really good point because you can get angry and oh, very yeah. quick to reply. And Don't be a keyboard warrior. Yes. No. Very, no, no. Yes. <laughs> so you quickly call them, try to figure out exactly what the situation is. Uh, hopefully you can fix it right then and there on the mm -hmm. phone and then politely ask them to redact or change or uh, edit the review. Sure. And that's number one thing, right? If it's something, you know, if it's that wild person that... <laughs> and you're going to have them. You do have them, especially on Google. They'll pop up because you don't have to be a... Like, you have to be a buyer or seller to leave a review on Rate My Agent. Right. Anybody can leave a review on Google. Right. So if that's just a crazy person, first of all, you can contact Google and say, that's just somebody, I don't know who they are. But just put, put that down below. I'm sorry, I'm not exactly sure who you are. Could you give me some more information? Because that's really... It's, you're just kind of laying out why well, you're trying to figure out who this yeah. person is. Because yeah. you're thinking about the next person to see that bad review. Mm -hmm. what it, what's going to look good to them that's it and then the last piece of the puzzle if you made a mistake own it it's it, it it's okay to make a mistake fix it own it as fast as you that. can yep. and then and then same request could you is there something we could do with the review now if they say no uh you just you say you just list out all the things you've done once again you're letting that future customer see how you handled that problem two years ago totally and and, and you and don't get too upset it's not the end of the world. Right. Right. It, yeah, I think it, that's a big I, And I love what you said to Kathy is it's, it, it just has to be in the agent's head that it is part of the process. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it is. You know, it's, it's just, it's as important. On a checklist. Exactly. I'll, like I'll, I'll be honest. There are a lot of end-to-end -end solutions in our world. How many of you seen Kathy in your career? Yeah. I, we got the end-to-end -end solution from lead generation yeah. all the way to closing. Right. And I'm Cradle like, to gray. And Cradle it's to all gray. there. And I go, nuts. I haven't found one yet mm -hmm. that has a review request at the very end because they stop at the commission. So that's the hole we're filling, right? right? And I think we're doing that with Realty One Group, which is awesome. Well, and what I like about it, and I, I feel this way, and I don't know if anyone else would, but I feel like if your ultimate goal is at the end is to get the review rather than get the commission check, it changes oh, the mindset. Yeah. That's a mindset it, winner. That's a yeah. mindset winner because yeah. now it's not just getting paid, it's that next level. Yeah. You're setting up checks from the mm -hmm. future. I, mean, yeah, I, can't, I right, can't imagine. Right. Like, stole the words out why of my mouth. You, yeah. Why would you not? Exactly. You know, build that pipeline in that space where it's just 
easiest to do. Mm -hmm. Like someone's really happy, they love what you did, and now they're gonna write some really good stuff mm -hmm. about you, yeah. It's cool. I hope every one of our agents that does not use this <laughs> is listening right now. Yeah. Because this, it's this just is very valuable. Like, yeah, and Rate My Agent is probably the best tool that I've seen for this. I'll as agree far, with you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and I wanna say, you wouldn't be working for them if it were not because of your experience. Right. And that's what I love about your representation of the product is that it's your integrity behind a company with integrity. Absolutely. I, I had worked at Fidelity, National Financial Family, title companies right. for 20 years. Uh, I saw Rate My Agent uh, about six months before they hired me and started promoting it heavily to agents that I was working with, yeah. saying, you've got to see this tool. This is different. This is not like anything else right. we've ever seen. They caught wind of that. And, and uh, sure enough, you know, we started chatting in that yeah. summer of 2020 when no one was leaving the house. And, uh, you know, it, it's uh, when they're an Australian based company. So working remotely is the rest of my career. I'm yeah. not, yeah. So very excited. And thanks to Taylor. Taylor does such yes. an excellent yeah. job of making sure that we have the right partners. And yeah. I love the fact that we're partners. I love it too. Um, and the first, you're the first franchise and by far the longest franchise that we have as part of To put an emphasis oh, awesome. on, yeah. on reviews and, yeah. Yeah. It's been and the best marketing avenue that a real estate agent has, yeah. right? Yeah. Somebody else speaking for them. Yeah. Not a flyer that just says why I'm the best, but somebody else saying <laughs> why, why I'm the why best. The best. Yeah. Perfect. That's a good springboard into, you brought up his background. I'd love to talk about what you did before real estate because we were <laughs> off camera and you mentioned something about the Padres. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I spent 12 years with the uh, San Diego Padres, right? Worked in the ticket office. Uh, great gig. If I single, I might still be there. Uh, but had a son who was six at the time. I missed the first year of T-ball, thought it's time to make a change. Yeah. I had a buddy that was with Chicago, Thailand, Phoenix. And so I, I reached out to him. Uh, but it was, you know, like I'm my, I'll, my dad, uh, gave me my love for sports and, 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 you know, to be able to work in the, and, uh, at the professional level, some of the things I got to do, you know, there was, uh, too many to mention, but, you know, like, for example, I decided to just call down to the clubhouse on us right before the all-star break and said, Hey, I've got some, I got two spots at, at Aviar, a really nice golf course in San Diego. And, uh, Wally Joyner took him with a buddy of his from Chicago. So. I, I know there's someone in the room, Ryan, who knows who Wally Joyner is <laughs> and remembers is he, those is days. He, is, he, Ryan, is he talking your language? <laughs> this is yeah, honestly so. like probably the Ryan's dying right now because he doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but but so so it was great, and uh, and, uh, and from that relationship, I built a relationship with the Chargers mm -hmm. and did some on the field. Uh, I was the start of the drive guy in the chain gang for four years. I mean, oh, it, cool. it, so I had a lot of fun during like, the say, junior Seau and all. Yeah, that. junior Seau. Awesome. I yeah, I have some great junior sales stories I'll, awesome. I'll, I'll tell ryan later yeah, and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah so it, it was a, a lot of fun but i really um you know getting in the title space was first of all i don't think people realize um how important it is uh how how how, how much you can help people in mm -hmm. that role how you how you get a chance to be there like i, I was kind of the father figure for hundreds maybe thousands of first-time home buyers mm. sitting there going through in phoenix to be able to go through the the, the deed of trust, which is what we use, not a mortgage, and get to that payment, that monthly payment, and look them square in the eye and go, this is the most important payment in your life. Yeah. This is way more important than food. You're going to never let this la you know, go, go, go you know, dormant. You're not going to, you got to make sure you're never late. Right. And they would just stare at me and I'm like, I, I don't mean to scare you, but yeah. this is it, right? This is going to set you up for life. And they're like, okay, okay. I love that. It was yeah. a lot of fun. I got to do a lot of that stuff. And, um, but, but, you know, the change here to go to a startup, much later in life. I wish it was 10 years earlier, yeah. but it's a blast. I'm having a great time yeah. uh, traveling around to places like this, talking to, I mean, this is base camp with, these are all owners. These are all really smart people who run franchises. Totally. I need to talk to these people. Yeah. And it's, I, I think, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like for us, I, I, we've all been with, I mean, Ryan's been with Realty One Group the longest, but we've all been for what, at least five years, five right? Years. All yeah. three of us. Awesome. And once again, don't want to speak for you guys, but we are proud of the product that we produce. And it sounds like you are, like you're proud to work for Rate My Age. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I've been to the hub and mm -hmm. I can see why you're proud. Yeah. That, that is unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, the Rate My Agent crew in Australia, they love like our soccer jerseys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Kuba, have you, have you met Kuba? I haven't met Kuba. Oh, I'm sure you'll meet him here. Okay. Up. All right. <laughs> I've heard that. It's a... Uh, like Ryan and I are on the marketing and branding team and that is Cuba's bread and butter. 
It's gotcha. like, I mean, and so we, for the longest time, we didn't have a creative director because Kuba was basically our acting creative director. All right. And so it's, I don't, I've been with Rog for six years, but like, I don't come from real estate. But when I interviewed with Realty One Group, I was like, this does not feel like real estate. It like, it was, it I'll was, agree with that. it's a, it's a breath yeah. of fresh air, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm just, I know I'm tangenting, but like, yeah, we're just so proud to work for this brand and the product that we produce and it, and I know you are as well, which yeah. is really cool. Like it, ma- it makes working a hell of a lot easier. A whole lot easier. Yeah. yeah. Even when there's struggles and tough things mm-hmm. and something goes wrong, you know, it's yep. uh, it's still not, not that big a deal. We can get through it. We totally. can figure it out. So, yeah. Um, well, Bill, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm hoping we can go grab a drink later, keep chatting, talk some more sports. Uh, we'll, you know, we can talk offline with Ryan because yeah. <laughs> I know he's dying right now. He's dying. <laughs> um, <laughs> Taylor and Kathy, thank you as always. This has been a blast um, and I'm excited to do more of these. Thank you. Yeah. We thank you for joining us today on another episode of One on One, a Realty One Group podcast. We are powered by One.U and ask if you have suggestions, recommendations, or questions, please email learning at realtyonegroup.com. And remember, pay close attention to the details, listen to understand, not respond, and always be a resource, not a sales pitch.